G'day, I'm Burjo. I'm Jace. I'm Jimmy Carr from Chasing Ghosts. And this is what we did on the weekend. From Good Things Melbourne 2022. I'm like, what year is it? Yeah, After 22. all these interviews, that's the first time we've said we're at Good Things, I think. No, we said it a couple other ones. <laughs> I reckon yeah, you, I reckon you know where we're at. Yeah, yeah. We're here. Good Things. Hi, Janine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jimmy. Yo. Hello, mate. G'day. We've been trying to get you on our stupid podcast for four years. I know. You were the here. first and person who said yes. Jimmy, not chasing ghosts. Yeah, I remember the At conversation. The and here we yeah, are. Expo. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Which is on now. I think we hadn't even started recording at all. We're like, oh, I know Jimmy. We'll get him on. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're like, yeah, fuck yeah. Three and a half years later. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three and a half years. That's, that's about the distance I release albums, but. <laughs> 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 But yeah, no, it's good, finally. Thank you. And um, you've been busy? Yeah. Busy? Yeah. Touring? Playing yeah. shows? Small yeah. shows? Big shows? Album? Yep. All sorts of shows. Fuck Lots of chaos, stuff. man. Yeah, there's a lot coming up. We've yeah. been uh, in the studio. We've been doing a heap, so we've got um, lots of good things to share with people. We're doing good some things. great work. Some good things. Good, good things. Yeah, yeah, we're doing some work with Stevie Knight up in um, Warain in Sydney and Sick. on Gadigal Country there, so that'll be pretty... Um, Pretty special to go spend a couple of weeks out there, or more than that, you know, five weeks. I think we're up there working on this new record, and and then we've got something else real special planned. So that'll be Ooh. that'll be coming Ooh. soon. I've already teaser, done the work, teaser, done the teaser. work already. That's what we like. Big that's things like. coming. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, no, it's been good. Been, how, how have you both been? Yeah, we've been good. We've been busy. <laughs> like, Real busy. As busy as you guys. So. <laughs> yeah, dying, dying out there from the heat. Yeah, dying in the sun and then coming yeah. here and talking to bands and yeah. running up and down. And, uh, yeah, yeah. But then outside of here, just like, we've been fucking busy. Yeah, I have right. noticed. Yeah, it's I have good, seen you around. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're hustling. Moving, we're hustling. Shaking. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Do what it's we've got to do. Just keep going. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so you've, was it, was your album out the start of this year? Um, what year is it? 2022. Yep. That's on the record. I've got the record. Yeah, I think it's a year. I think it's just shy of a year. Yeah. So I think the first single was maybe 2021 summer summer summer? on 26th January. That's why I remember it. Yep. And then, so yeah, it's just, yeah, and then the record must have come out like somewhere a couple of months later. Yeah. So we must be around a year. Over a year, yeah. Maybe like closer to 18 months now. So. Yeah, it's been good. It's been um, because we stalled on it because of COVID. Right. So we're like circling, going, ah, oh, when do we drop? Like, heaps what do we of do? What do we do? Thinking, you know, and then, and then sort of had to come out. And we wanted to really do a lot of like Aboriginal community shows mm-hmm. first and foremost because of the content of the record yeah. and, you know, really show that love to First Nations communities first and foremost, which has been epic. And, you know, taking the band, like, we've got four non-Indigenous guys, obviously me and Benny are both uh, Aboriginal, and then, um, you know, Jacob before Ben was Māori, so mm. we always had this kind of, like, yeah, Indigenous yeah. kind of yarns, and and, um, and the band's come on this big journey, kind of, you know, to really understand what's behind the lyrics, what's behind the messaging, and just the whole, this new project, this latest release is all sort of taking them on this big journey. And, um, and we have some real honest conversations about it, you know, like it's not, like everyone who's up there means what they say and says what they mean. And yeah. um, and so I'm, you know, I'm really happy that we've got to create something that meant a lot, meant a lot to people back home, um, you know, and, and talking about some of the content that I guess, it's not really stuff you generally hear. 100%. Sort of like a punk rock band kind of doing, or mm-hmm. a folk punk band, or whatever we, <laughs> whatever, whatever we are, whatever we are. <laughs> right, you're a mystery band. <laughs> I don't have no, what do you want to be? I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a band. It's a band. It's a band. It's yeah. a rock band. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know because when I hear rock bands and in my head, yeah. I hear Nickelback, and that immediately <laughs> makes. Or oh, you don't want to go to San Quentin. <laughs> that immediately. <laughs> <laughs> <is folding around. laughs> Yeah, old mate looks like the paddle pop line, yeah. and it <laughs> offends me. Yeah. So you're thinking triple M, but you're not triple M. No, no, no. Oh, play an indigenous oh, artist on triple M. Oh, well, I had a crack at them. They do play a couple, but oh. I told them to pull their shit together a bit. Uh, they play triple M from the eighties. No, just just the idea of like you shouldn't. Do things based on quotas. You no. should do things because, because you believe you it. Just do and that. if your move is to try and steal the old Triple J 
uh, countdown on the 26th and yeah. that's just sort of like oh well the Jays aren't doing oh, this there's so a we'll, 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 we'll jump it's on it it's just yeah. like then why did you play Midnight Oil for years yeah. why did you play Yossi and Yindi for years they don't listen because no one was listening to the lyrics obviously they were like popular, that's it. they were like yeah, yeah, you know, it sounds alright I like good. the dancing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy what's this song about what, yeah, what is this song about <laughs> the beds are burning what yeah what's this talking about oh man he's funny yeah, cool band yeah it's a bit it's a bit weird so but there are some great producers over there that are pushing that and it's obviously it's a commercial station it has yeah. different interests it has to do different things but they are stepping to the mantle and you know I've put that challenge down to everyone in the industry to step step up and, and make change and I think we're starting to see that like the exactly. Ari is yep. the Ari is we're insane it's like a baker boy just cleaned oh, yeah, up stole the whole fucking Ari yeah. you're new five five, five. five. Like, I haven't heard enough from Ben about yeah, I was like, your new right. drummer no. hello he, just, he walked in and he's like I was like ah uh, Mr. Aria and he's yeah, like not Aria Aria yeah, he just has the five and I was like oh, easy <laughs> put your Maras out of my face as, as soon as he like, walked in before uh, it's sick though I love it as soon as he walked in before we're like oh Mr. Aria when he's like but even, you know, like Thelma, like I seen yeah. her play the other night and um, just like there are so many First Nations artists that are connecting with non-Indigenous audiences and with Aboriginal audiences and Torres Strait audiences and around the globe. And it's like, it's really, you don't want to miss out on great music, you know, and so much of my politics and so much of my worldview came from artists that were, you know, even early stuff like, I see Max out the back. I'm saying Max like I know Max Cavalera. I don't. You're just mates. Maxie I, boy. I've shot his hair before. Yeah, right. he's right. I looked at him What's and up? I was like, who's that Who's that old dude? And then I was like, Cut your dreads off, bro. Max Cavalera. And nine, like 15-year-old me nearly jumped out of my skin. Because <laughs> oh, I used to wear Sepultura dog tags. Fuck. Can yeah. you remember those? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, dude, I was camo right. shorts and dog yes, tags. Yes, 100. Yeah, and then I had like... My mates at school would be, they call me Sep because all I talked about was like Sep Sep Sepultura, that's new record man. Dude, my so 21st birthday, the DJ had two metal songs. Right. He had Sepultura, Roots, Bloody Roots. 100. And I'm like, it. don't worry about the other one, that'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think he had uh, or something. Yeah, no, I think they had like Metallica 1. So I was yeah, just right. like, just play those two on loop. So that was like a trip, you know, but when I look at what he. You know, even his early stuff is really, like, proud of Indigenous Brazilian culture, you know, and that featured in their music. And then, you know, Rage Against the Machine spoke about all these similar-themed things about injustice. And I, I felt like growing up, there was a lot more people that spoke up around... Political music. Yeah, in punk yeah. rock and in, yeah. in metal and, in, and all those spaces. And then it sort of turned into 10 years of you know hair straighteners and um, <laughs> complaining about life being really tough and it's like bro you live in a western country you're in the bro, top one you, grew, you grew up in LA with money <laughs> you don't have a hard life bro oh no the fucking fuel went up oh shut up cunt so there's there's, there's a few and I'm, I don't think every, every band needs to do political songs I'm not pushing that agenda I'm just suggesting that substantive songs carry and those messages carry and you can approach them from lots of different directions you know like there's um, you know like even what was the song back in the day it was um, fuck here we go yeah, here we go <laughs> alright uh, which one which band uh, wait 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 <laughs> my name is Luca I live on the second floor oh do you know remember that yeah right, that's a song about domestic violence yeah you like two thirds into that song, love and life, before you realise what's like, going on. Oh, fuck. That yeah. song still does that. It people still don't moves. Listen to the lyrics. Not nearly enough. Not enough. They, they go, listen. Oh, they listen to it, but they, yeah, they don't the get hook. the story. Yeah. It's like, bro, listen. Yeah. Read the lyrics. Yeah. Go. Oh, fuck. You know, and I, I, I can't go to your shows anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, right. I can't. Right. Because I get too sad. Yeah, you get it. Because I'm like, bro, I bawl my eyes out. I'll stand at the bar. And That's I don't a common drink reaction. So I just lean on the bar and cry. And then people are like, they bro, come over and right? give you I'm a like, beer. I'm like, come. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? I'm a fucking chasing ghost show. I'm fucking sad. Like, this, bro, you fucking pull my heartstrings. It's weird that, like, years ago, it used to be comedy banter. Like, I used to do a lot of, like, stupid banter. Like, oh, I remember. I was funny. Funny. Yeah. remember. It was reasonably funny. At least I thought it was. Yeah. And uh, it got a few cheap laughs. And then, you know, the stories, really on this record, we really try to work those stories, to share those stories. And I just seen, like, heaps of people crying in the crowd. And I was like, that's a very... Un it's un different, it's, isn't it's it? an unusual feeling. But that's a thing now. I was in the Gold Coast and we played uh, with the men's from Resist Records. And we did a, uh, I did a solo co-headliner with them. And I started... 
telling this song and it was about SK and it was about him. Bro, him I can't do it. I can't. I can't Bless think him. about it. Thinking of you, my man. And, um, and oh, I, as soon as I started, don't start because I'll start. Oh, no, as bro, soon as I started, you were coming. Nah. Like, Fuck. And we're all done. <laughs> Keep the eyes open. As soon as I started, <laughs> I just started crying and I couldn't stop it. Then the whole fucking crowd was crying. So all these adults in a tiny little dungy room just go, <laughs> Dude, that night and day. Yeah. I walked in and watched your day acoustic set. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, half a song in. I'm like, fuck. I'm out. Yeah. I'm fucking done. He came back There's to the hotel and he's just like, nah. And I'm crying in a box. If there like, are any fucked. emo kids that um, need a good cry, or if you're not, you know, you need that, chuck on the record. Real, real tears, not like... Welcome All of my life. Valentine's tears. Yeah. Like actual yeah. songs yeah, like, that hit. Like you listened to emo when you were a kid, but now yeah. you're 30. You're saying because your parents didn't buy you an ice cream. Like, yeah. Like, grow up, cunt. But now it's like, <laughs> oh, fuck. These are real serious issues. Yeah. And it, stories and experiences. It's like, bro, I can't handle that. Like, I love it. But I'm like, fuck. Well, it was, it was hard to write because picking those subjects was very difficult to write about them. Because yeah. in the past you could... It wasn't the responsibility. I only had to serve my own kind of agenda. But in this case, it was like a responsibility to every topic that I sung about. So whether it was like, you know, busted lung with a hate crime uh, on a friend of mine who's a, you know, a proud gay man and um, his resilience and his ability to just kind of see a bigger picture. And it gave me, you know, that story wasn't about him being assaulted the story was about him surviving it and how he responded to it mm. and it was just this like it had a sense of humanity to it that I was sort of captivated by and when he told me this story and and to write that song was like I had to honour everything that he was about and that was difficult because yeah. you know you, you've got to try and get in someone's head and you've got to make sure it's respectful and it's done in a manner that's conducive to the audience as well as the subject you're singing about and as a you know as a cis straight man that was it wasn't about his orientation it was about this human experience this bigger experience about you know being respond like having the decision that you can send people to prison for a really really long time and recognizing that they weren't going to change in prison so what was the point of sending them to prison and so he advocated they have a second shot and that was huge you know like someone to be able to have the foresight to consider that uh, you know, some are singing about massacres, that same sort of thing is like, and massacres that are personable, to, uh, right. not personable rather, but personal to uh, my people back home and having to make sure that people were uh, comfortable with how the story was told, that it was told accurately yeah. and it was reflected in those ways. It's, dude, it's, it's heavy stuff, but it's it, good. Yeah. There's not many people who can do it. And we've, we, we've said it for a long time. Like I've known you for a long, long time. And we've always said that like, you are just the voice of our generation now. Oh, bless. We reckon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We love you, mate. Thank you. Right it's, back at you. It's and, good. And it's good that the scene in general, mm. I hate the term the scene, yeah, yeah. but they're like, oh, fuck, there's Jimmy. And yeah, everyone dope. knows. Dope. But okay. it's, that's it's that's good. That's that's polite. Polite. You're, like, you're like a, a figure for change. But thank which, you. I appreciate that. Because not many people can carry the weight either because it's there's a lot of weight on the shoulders yeah but you can do it yeah I'm, I try to and you know a big shout out to my man Briggs um, you know like he's a person he's younger than me Goodies. we saw him before right. yeah, we saw him this morning <laughs> alright yeah. dope right and so he had the foresight years ago to realise his legacy is bigger than him Right. Yeah. And he's been in service of other musicians, of other communities, bringing communities together, changing the industry for the better. And, you know, man, like a black fella doing jokes with old mate from The Simpsons. Like, this is like huge. huge. When I was a kid, you know, there was just so few people outside of the sporting arena mm. that you could point to and, and be engaged in the journey of uh, Aboriginal artistry and storytelling. And now it's just, it's so, it's everywhere, you know? And I think that what I'm appreciating more and more is non-Indigenous Australia is leaning in. And we're learning. And yeah. learning. Because the next generation, cause especially how, because we're millennials, yeah. and we, we sort of got a little bit when we were young, but fuck all. You just got like the preview for Rabbit Proof Fence. Bro, and, and we got like, like a little bit of Dreamtime stuff. Yeah. And but then that's much, it. Yeah. And then they're like, 
Oh, that's all you get. Fuck you. Yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, we'll see you on, on uh, yeah. fucking Jan 26. Like, fuck. And, you, and when we're young, we're like, oh, we don't know. Well, what would you know? We yeah, didn't what know. would you know? But now, Gen Z, they know. Yeah, yeah. And they're learning. It's oh, like yeah. in the curriculum. Like, well, in parts, and we need to make enough. sure that it is. We need to they make need sure to it is. But, um, you know, I, th- I think we're, we're definitely moving in the right direction. So. Correct. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. It is. So. You're doing a great job. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. This is very yeah. kind of you. Very generous with the compliments, guys. Right. I'll give you that 50 well, back well, later. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, let me say... It's a cheap bribe. To be, to be fair, it's come <laughs> a lot... 50 <laughs> between the two of them. That's not one each. Yeah, that's... that's, that's uh, it's, six. 50, it's 50 cents, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's two potato twirly sticks each. That's it. That's pretty good. Well, to be fair, <laughs> it's a long way since I Fuck met you... Up. In a towel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you walked yeah. here? It was the yeah. first time we met you. Yeah, just... we met. I was in a towel. <laughs> um, just random, I was in a random apartment and you walked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I think we got really inebriated. I'm pretty yeah, it sure. Was a big it was a big night. <laughs> Our and friends ever since. Met, yeah. Um, yeah. Chasing ghosts? Yeah. Get around them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jimmy. Peace. Peace.